Okay, let's um, do this little demonstration. We'll repeat from class. I've got this circle here with a diameter. Its diameter has a measure of exactly 10 centimeters, and we're going to roll it across the ground. You all know where this is going. We roll this thing across the ground, we'll trace its path. And we can see one complete revolution there. That's the distance it travels in one revolution. And you know this is very familiar because the circumference of a circle is the same as the distance it would travel if it were to make one revolution rolling across the ground. So this distance here, a linear measurement, is actually equal to the circumference. And I measured it with Sketchpad, and you can see this is looking very, very, very familiar. And if, to, if you have, if you have a, let's say at your high school, if, if on March 14th you are dismissed at 159, you know that at least the first six digits, 3.14159, when we multiply by 10, you, we would get this number here. So this is simply 10 times pi, because the circumference of a circle is pi times the diameter. Remember, circumference is a linear measurement. Linear diameter, circumference, linear units. And here's just another way we can demonstrate. If we were to take this figure and draw an arc like this, measuring the arc, as you can see, it keeps getting larger and larger. I'm going to sweep this five centimeter radius all the way around until if I, I make a full circle and I would come up with again, in this case, pi times a diameter, or 2 pi r since the radius is 5. Um, 5 times 2 is 10 times pi. You recognize the number. Well, here we go with exercise number 3, a very basic exercise. You're given a radius of 6 inches, and you're finding the circumference. But let's just go through the visual visualization. We've got these two formula we all know and love, and clearly we're going to use this one because we're given a radius. So let's just, you know, let, let's just focus on this one formula. I put a spot on the radius so we could watch the path as this circle, the purple circle, rotates down the path. And you can see clearly that in one revolution, it travels that distance. That's if I took the purple again and straightened it out. That's how far it would be. Let's do the substitution. Circumference is 2 pi times 6. And when you evaluate it, you will almost always be asked for two answers. This is an exact answer, 12 pi, uh, 12 times pi inches. And beneath it would be the decimal approximation. Don't use that 3.14. Use your calculator. Use the pi key times 12, then do the rounding. And there you go, to the nearest tenth. Well, let's do another exercise, number four, elemental. And we've got the blue circle. We'll find a circumference. This time we're given a diameter. And as you would imagine, we would work off this formula now because it's just pi times the diameter. And the same thing, if I could create a visualization of this, this circumference is the distance the blue circle would travel in one complete revolution. I perform the substitution. And then I'm going to do some arithmetic. It's just 17 times pi. Now when I do that, let's remember, I go my 17 times pi, 17, multiply, and use the pi key. So you've got, the, you've got all those digits that you can round after the fact, but don't round before. Don't use 31.14. I'm going to hit this, and now I can say it looks like 53 and 4 tenths if I'm rounding to the nearest tenth. And we'll call it good. Well, let's make sense of this arc length corollary, which is described in a very confusing way in our book. We've got these two formulas. Aye, aye, aye. Well, let's, let's trim it down a little bit. Arc length of, you know, this is equal to some measure over 360 times 2 pi r. Well, forget all that. Let's just make sense. Um, I want you to imagine this is an arc right here. This dg, this red piece, is a fractional part of the circle. So we could go through and make a substitution. And we'll use the example of 120. And so now this is a 120 degree arc. And we stuck with our five centimeters. I like that because it comes out nice, easy numbers here. 
And now if, if I work this out here, I can simplify this. Let's just look at it this way. 120 out of 360, this is one-third. This arc is one-third of the circle. One-third. And 2 pi r, well, that's the circumference. And we remember from a previous example, or radius of 5, 2 5s are 10. So the we have a circumference of 10 pi. So it's one-third of the circle. That's it. One-third of 10 pi. Now, when it comes time to evaluate that, then it's time to pull out the old trusty calculator. And let's pull that out. Oh, let's clear this off here. And we'll say... 10 times pi. We've seen that number a bunch. Just move the decimal point one and we'll divide by three. And there you go. We've evaluated and we get about to the nearest hundredth, that is 10.47 centimeters. And if we wanted to see that, we could actually measure it directly off the software here. And you can see as it increases, we have a measure here, the measure of the arc, which you remember is equal to the measure of the central angle, and this is the actual length. So the size of this, this will be determined by the size of the arc or the angle of the arc, but also the size of the circle. How much of the circumference? In this case, one third. So let's apply an arc length problem here, number 11 from our exercise in our textbook. And we've got a 40 degree central angle, which is also means we have the arc AB is 40 degrees, either way you want to look at it. And we have a radius of six meters. So we have the formula up here, and we're just going to go through the substitution and um, 40 for the measure of the arc and six for the radius. And of course, we you can see right from that that we've got one ninth of the circle. This would be one represent one ninth of the circle and the full circle would be 12 pi. And I can simplify this, divide out the threes um, and I'm left with four thirds pi. And for those of you who are having problems with your calculators, remember four thirds pi. You, no matter how you do it, you can take four thirds, four divided by three or divide by three. And then I'll multiply that times my good old fashioned pi. And there you go. And to the nearest tenth, it's looking like 4.2 meters.